We start, though, where we left off on Friday, and that's in Tuscaloosa, where Brandon Miller took the floor and, of course, did his thing for Alabama as they were hosting Arkansas, his first home game since everything went down, and received a, a big ovation from the Crimson Tide faithful, as one would expect. And, Chad, the, no surprise on that end, but the starting lineup, quote-unquote, routine and we'll hear from Nate Oates in a moment, where Brandon Miller, who, again, brought the gun to the scene, where two of his friends are now facing capital murder charges in an event that took place on January 15th. News came out last week in the preliminary hearing that's now in front of a grand jury that Miller received a text from Darius Miles, now former teammate of Miller, to bring the gun back to the scene, which was then used in this... Uh, killing of uh, Kamia Harris. Chad, he goes through the starting lineup announcement and then has a pat down as if it's a, you know, a, a frisking of sorts. Now, some are trying to say that this is like the UFC pat down. No, this is, this is something that is uh, spitting in the face of the victim and overlooking what is a very serious issue. Not that he's playing, but that they're not viewing this uh, in, in the right way. And, and, and the right way would be with some sympathy, with some empathy. I've seen nothing of that. Alabama told us last week they were going to play him regardless. Even if Greg Byrne, the AD, was saying he didn't learn about the text message specifically until that hearing, well, they were going to play him anyway because he played after Greg Byrne, the AD, learned of this news. It's unclear when Nate Oates found out about that. But they're dug in on playing him. And this continues to happen, where we don't know. Who knows the news cycle, Chad, of how long this actually goes on. But the more and more that the cameras are rolling and he's on the court or doing something, or Nate Oates has a microphone in front of him, the more and more this story continues. And it's sad. It's sad. It's, it's uh, alarming that we haven't seen more done in terms of the discipline end of it. Maybe there's been something behind the scenes. There's no indication that that has happened. And in regards to how he took the floor this past weekend, this past Saturday, here's Nate Oates' response as he started his presser. Before I get started on the game, it was brought to my attention after the game about our pregame introductions. I think that's something that's been going on all year. I don't really know. I'm not... I don't watch our introductions. I'm not involved with them. I'm drawing up plays during that time. Regardless, it's not appropriate. It's been addressed, and I can assure you it definitely will not happen again the remainder of this year. So, And, of course, Miller's headed to the draft after this season. Ridiculous. That, the, the fact that he's acting like he doesn't know what goes on, the same way he's saying he doesn't know what – he has control of whenever they're not on the practice court and they're headed out on a, you know, a weekend night. Look, fans are fans. You know, I've, I've heard from a lot of them. I'm sure you have Hutton outkick yep. has heard from a lot of Alabama fans. Uh, a lot of them put creative things on, you know, hard hats over the weekend about outkick founder, Clay Travis. So these things happen. None of it is particularly surprising with fans and their defense of, of, of players or coaches, but, I just have a hard time watching what happened on Saturday and watching Nate Oates' response to it and just watching that clip that we just played for you right there and thinking that anyone that's not a diehard Alabama fan is actually supporting this team and this coach. I, I, I think they're not. I mean, I, this is whoever plays Alabama in the NCAA tournament is America's team. It is that simple. People rooted against Kentucky when they were going for an undefeated season, and they didn't have anybody on that team that you know murdered someone that was taken off the team, and then someone else who brought the murder weapon to someone that was playing, continuing to play as the best player on the team. And people root against them because they were Kentucky and they were undefeated. And when Wisconsin beat them in the Final Four, that was a big night for America. If Alabama loses in this tournament, it's a big night for America. Um, there's no justice for a, the murder victim and her family. I'm not trying to equate basketball to that. But this is more about a lack of discipline and accountability within a program and a completely unlikable man and coach in Nate Oates and how he's handled this. Look, if Nate Oates kicked Brandon Miller off the team, 
when finding out about this or even suspended him for a month or eight games or whatever you want to say the suspension should have been. took action. Took action in some way. I think I and a lot of other people come back and say, man, this is just a really tough situation. Boy, that really sucks for the victim first and foremost, but this is a crazy situation for Alabama. And Nate Oates did what he absolutely had to do in this case. He's done none of that. Mm -hmm. And in doing so, Hutton, he has completely reconstructed what we believe coaches have to do well, it's, in it's, a situation. This is a no-brainer. It's anyone attached to that, anyone like, there that night, anyone around the guys who committed this horrific crime, they're done with your program. Well, and then Brandon Miller, who does this during warm-ups, then proceeds to put it as his Twitter banner on social media, which has since been deleted, uh, taken down, Uh, And the stories at OutKick in in regards to that with uh, a great job by Hookstead on this. But the it's embarrassing for anyone with a conscience that you have your coach every time he opens the the microphone is speaking on this, but not really saying anything other than, yeah, we're we're doing what we're doing because we want to do it. We're going to continue to do it regardless of what people think about how this went down, even though we now know. And it's an undeniable fact because there's not a single side of this story that says he didn't supply the weapon by driving it back to the scene at the request of Darius uh, Darius Miles that, and and based on the quotes from the text, there's no debate about what was insinuated that was in the car. So he knew, even if he didn't know it was in the car at the time, he knew based on that text that it was. And no one's denying that, including Miller's attorney. But yet we have this going into the game where he's being patted down. And then post game, he's putting this as his banner and on a freeze frame of being patted down during the warmups with his name up on the jumbotron as everyone cheers. It is embarrassing, not just for Alabama, for the SEC, for college basketball, that this continues to go on without anyone taking accountability for why or why not they decided to go about this the way they did. There's no detail to it because Oates and Byrne don't give us any detail as to their line of thinking or what's going on behind the scenes from what they've been told. And it's more than just charges haven't been brought because that's not going to happen. This is more than that based on the way this went down, the facts that have been out since the hearing took place, and whether or not they knew about it on January 15th, I think they probably did. Um, and they've gone about it the, the, this way and so nonchalant, you know, uh, not even mentioning the victim until realizing that they haven't. It, it, it's alarming. That, that's, it's sad in how they've handled this. It, it's sad. It's, it's pathetic. It's a just an, not just an awful look. This is not just about optics. It really does just, to me, cast a shadow over the entire Alabama athletic department. And this is a very proud and strong athletic department. I mean, look at their basketball program right now. They're probably going to be the number one overall seed in the NCAA tournament. Football program, very strong. They win a lot of games. But rational people are going to have a hard time separating that from what's going on right now. And and, and really forever with Nate Oates because of how poorly he's handled this. Greg Byrne has handled this poorly as Alabama's athletic director. No one is showing any leadership. And I am sick and tired of Jay Billis going on TV, and whatever a student athlete does, he takes the side of that athlete. It is tired. It is old. Jay Billis knows basketball. Jay Billis, I think, was a lawyer at one point or went to law school, so he feels like he's the little guy's defender, and he's got to go up on the student athlete on every single cause, and him talking about Brandon Miller having rights. No one is denying that Brandon Miller has rights as a citizen and with the legal system. It's why he's a cooperating witness right now and he's not being charged with anything. If the police really wanted to dig on his knowledge of what was in his car the whole night, they probably could dig up enough knowledge to eventually charge him with something. They're not because they're trying to get the two murderers convicted. I understand that. That's good police work. He shouldn't be charged with anything for that reason because he's going to roll over on the two guys who committed the murder. And he's probably going to testify to that. And they've even said, his attorney said he's been cooperative the entire time. Those rights are different than the quote-unquote right you have as a student athlete representing a university 
and playing a sport at the highest level of college athletics. How can Alabama fans or anyone not get this through their thick skulls? It is very simple to understand. Just because you say Brandon Miller should be off the team doesn't mean you're saying Brandon Miller should go to prison. Right. There should be action from the school, from the program with him, separate of whatever the legal system does. And Jay Billis going on talking about he has rights. Come on. Well, but he also, Billis yes, also insinuated someone that, with a that lawyer. This would, this, they would have handled this the same way as any other student athlete, and that is just not true. No, and it's not in Hutton. You brought up a good point before the show today, and we were talking about this. It's not just that he's the maybe the best player in America is why he's getting preferential treatment. If Alabama was an eight or a nine seed, right. and they were disappointing at all this year, he's probably kicked off the team. Yes. Or and you suspended know what, at, at You know what Alabama minimum. fans are saying? If that was the case, good riddance. Yeah. You want good to riddance. Wipe, Get yeah. rid of this. You anyone need to wash that your had hands a, of it. Yes. Anyone that had a, a, a part to do in this stain on our program and our athletic department with this murder – Get them out of here. They would be arguing that if Brandon Miller was not leading Alabama to a number one overall seed and scoring 41 points to beat a team in overtime. And, and That's the only well, reason they're defending him. And meanwhile, doing the pat down during warmups for the first home game back. You can't defend that. That's you cannot. Awful. You cannot defend that. I'm so, I don't care if this has happened all year. The fact that it happened after January 15th, and not one person on that team is smart enough to think, you know, guys, maybe we should cool it with the pat down. You know, once now that all this stuff is out, you know, maybe we shouldn't be doing this before a game, even if it's not always televised and there's not cameras on us. You cannot convince me that every player on that team and that Brandon Miller and the kid that's doing that to him is that stupid. Well, they're and, not that stupid. And then posting it as the banner on they your social media. They know what they're doing. They knew, yes. And then deleting that account. They, they, they know what they're doing. You're, you're exactly right. And meanwhile, Chad, the, the SID wants basketball questions only. Game only questions for Nate Oates. I, I mean, really? You well, really expect the questions to just stick to the game based on what we've seen now? This is the, Absolutely not. This is the Alabama way. It's not just Alabama, but Alabama is majors in this when it comes to censorship of their own media that covers the team and what the media is willing to report on and what they're willing to say because they're probably threatened access at all times by that athletic department. But, yeah, to come on and say, you know, only questions about the game, it's, it's not going to end anytime. You know what? It's going to get no. worse and worse for them in if the they tournament. keep winning. Yeah, in the tournament with the national media. I just keep thinking about, look, this team on the court is good enough to win a national title and how awkward it's going to be if on yeah. championship Monday night this Alabama team and Brandon Miller – has got the championship hat on and is cutting down a net. And I keep thinking about just how awful that's going to feel, thinking about the victim's family watching that. And the rest of America that's not an Alabama fan that doesn't have crimson-colored glasses on, how awkward they're going to feel watching this run that's going to be led by Brandon Miller, a guy who transported a murder vehicle to a murder. This is, a, this is an incontrovertible fact. This is not spin. This is nothing else. Even if you believe everything that his attorney said, it's still an incontrovertible fact. The attorney's not arguing that he did not deliver the murder weapon to the scene of a murder. So let's get that straight before continuing to talk about this. It's disgusting. And the, the back and forth with the text are available through this hearing. And there's a video as well of who was involved and who wasn't and who drove the car and who didn't in, in, in this respect. And Again, Chad, you're right. No one's disputing the fact of who brought the weapon back and who knew the weapon was in the car that he was driving back to that bar on the strip in Tuscaloosa. I would say that the fact that the defense attorney is, is not in that statement saying, you know, he never saw the text and, you know, definitely didn't have any knowledge of the gun in the car. I would probably take that as, yeah, he knew that it was in the back seat yeah, of the car. Well, yeah, and in, in fact, it goes on to say they just, he didn't know the intent of why Miles wanted his gun. Yeah, and as, as someone, you know, uh, with a reasonable brain, I'll also say that even if the defense attorney claimed he had no knowledge of yeah. a gun underneath some clothes in the back seat, in the seat of the car, and that he got a text saying, bring me my joint back, I would probably say, well, that's defense attorney speak. And he probably knew it was there. So let's just keep that in mind as well.